Hello everyone and welcome to the fourth episode of designing a website in Figma. In this episode we are going to focus on horizontal cards, meaning this section of website where the text and image kind of go side by side and they are switching orders. And as I mentioned, this video is a part of a series of designing a website in Figma. So if you'd like to see how we created all these things, all these elements and sections, components, etc definitely go and check out my channel where I have a playlist where all of these videos are going to be compiled. And now let's get started. Now this section is going to be very similar to what we have here, which means the first title section, the title area, right? So, and the image is going to be smaller while also we are not going to use H1, but rather I think H2 or H3 maybe. But in overall structure, this is going to be very similar. So let me just, um, let me just copy this and I'm going to take this as a guide as we created this new section, this new component. So on this website, we are using the 12th column layout. So we have a layout grid with 12 columns, as you can see here. Each one of these is 74 pixels or points wide and the space between them is 74. And this is of course going to be reflected in our new component, in our new section, meaning it's going to have 1152 pixels in width or less so that it fits within this layout, right? So let me just use my text tool by pressing T on my keyboard and then clicking once. And I'm going to type in horizontal card headline. And as I said, we are not going to be using H1, uh, which this appears to be H1. So under text on this right side, I'm going to select H2, second most important headline. And if you're wondering how we set this up, again, go and check out previous videos in this series. Anyway, here we have here we have the horizontal card headline and then of course we're going to also get the horizontal card description. So let me just rewrite this horizontal card description. The, this is where we right I just I just wrote down a couple of sentences so that we can kind of use this as a placeholder. And then of course there's going to be the button. So under assets I'm going to go for search for button and then I'm going to paste that right here by dragging. Awesome. So now I can select these three components, uh, sorry, these three elements and press shift A to add auto layout, then press enter and by shift clicking deselect the button, right? So that we select only the headline and the description and under horizontal resizing, I'm going to go for fill container with both of these. And this means that the width of these texts now depends on the total width of this frame, which is, which is what we need, right? And then under spacing in auto layout, I'm going to type in 24 so that we have 24 pixels in terms of spacing. And then I'm going to rename this frame by selecting it, pressing command R and typing in horizontal sorry, horizontal card content. So this is now horizontal card content. There's also be horizontal card image. And I'm gonna duplicate this image and paste that right here, which is gonna shrink our image. And I'm gonna, you know, since we have an image fill and it is set to fill, you can see that I can resize the image without squishing or uh, pulling the image uh, aspect ratio, it kind of stays, it kind of uses this object as a mask. I think we could actually use only 10, 10 of these columns, right? Because since this is the title area, this is the most important thing, the most important section, I think the horizontal card would be better off if we did something like this, right? You know, using just the 10 of the 12 columns. Um, we want, we want to keep this at the most prominent visual kind of importance. So let me just select these two elements, press shift A and then set the spacing to 24, right? 24. Maybe we want to go for 24 plus 74. And also I'm going to rename this to horizontal card container, horizontal card container. And then um, these elements, both of these elements are going to be set to fill container. 
I will probably change this settings later because I'm not sure if we want to keep, you know, if we, wanna, um, we want this to happen. For now, I think we could set both of these to fill container, right? So both, both have fill container. And I said that this is going to take the width of 10 columns, right? So let me just see what this actually looks like in terms of width. So we have 10 columns and if each of these is 74 pixels, that means it's gonna have 70, 740 pixels in width, but also we have to account for the spacing between these and 10 columns have nine spaces between them, which means 740 plus nine times 24. And if we add this to the field over here, which means 740, plus 740 plus 9 times 24 we get 956 so that's the total width this horizontal card container is gonna have 956 956 and this also means that i'm gonna add another auto layout on top of this horizontal card container which means selecting this and pressing shift a and then i'm going to make it 1440 pixels wide 1440 and also 96 over here, zero here, and then add a fill. So this means that now when we actually resize this, this section stays in the middle with a firm predetermined width, which is our goal. And now let's just actually put that into our website frame. We are going to turn this into a component later, but for now let's just test how this looks in the context of a website. Here you can see that it fits nicely, precisely within 10 columns, but at the same time, I think we could make the text section a bit more narrow. To be specific, I think we could make it span four columns in total. So now this means that, as I said, this is gonna be fixed, this is gonna be fill container, but I think we could also reduce the spacing 274 which is the width of one column so yeah i think this layout these proportions will look best in my opinion right so let's just keep this in mind and of course um there's going to be also the opposite direction of this card which means the image will go first and then the text will go second um, so i'm going to duplicate this and then what i'm going to do is select the horizontal card content and just use command and bracket to move that to this second position, right? So that it's on the right side right now. Now, here's the thing, or rather two things. If we keep the vertical padding at 96, we will get this huge spacing between these features, if uh, between these, sorry, these horizontal cards, if we stack them on top of each other. So what I think could be better approach right here would be getting rid of the top part of the padding which means setting the top one to zero while also keeping the bottom one at 96. So this creates a consistent spacing similar to what we have here, what we have here, right? In the feature section, we also turned off the top padding for this section. But I think we could do the same here. It makes the most sense, right? And the second thing is maybe this is just my OCD acting up but I think we could, it could look more balanced if we had these sides of the image kind of aligning vertically. What I have in mind is if we increase the spacing, right? so if we increase the spacing to about, what's the right value? 110 seems to be the right value. So if we set both of these to 110, you can see how these images kind of their edges meet horizontally. When I use the guide, it becomes more apparent, right? These edges meet right here, and I think this looks better than the alternative. So that's the reason why I would keep this, uh, this setup. Or since we now have this huge spacing right here, which goes against the law of proximity, which states that items that, that logically belong together should be closer together and this kind of so this distance is smaller than this distance now we are getting really technical but um, since 
logically these belong closer together than these two right so these are completely two separate horizontal cards but these elements are two parts of the same horizontal card that's where the law of proximity states that this should be closer to the image than these two images between each one. So I think we should be looking at increasing this value, this width of, of this text section so that it, it kind of decreases this spacing right here. And since we set this value to fill and this one to fill as well, I think we could set the spacing with both of these two space between and then we can move the boundary of this text section without actually um, changing the size of the image. So again, I'm gonna, use, I'm gonna select this horizontal card container and then go to advanced layout and space between. And then I can do this, right? So I'm going to position this, I think somewhere around here, similar to this one that will also end here. And the spacing is calculated automatically for us, which means that um, these horizontal cards now adhere to the law of proximity, which is very important. I'm also planning to do a video on Gestalt principles and uh, the law of proximity is one of them. So if you're interested in hearing more about the law of proximity and all these Gestalt principles in web design, definitely leave a comment below or leave a like. Right, so we have figured out the layout, we have figured out uh, the position of elements, their size and the overall position and how they kind of work together. So now what I think would be great is if we actually turn this into a component and make sure that we can reuse these elements across our website without you know, while also keeping uh, everything consistent. So uh, let me just remove this title area. I'm going to rename this to horizontal, horizontal card left and then horizontal card right. And I'm going to select both of these and go to this drop down menu on the top under components. And I'm going to click on create component set, right? So we have now a component that's called component one, which I'm going to rename to horizontal card, horizontal, sorry, horizontal card. And we want to do a couple of things. We want to make it easy for us to change the, the direction, which means that it's going to be a property that we can easily switch. We want to make sure that we can easily change the text of the headline description and the button and that we can also easily update the image. With the image it's going to be a bit more difficult because uh, component properties doesn't offer us with the option to swap an image easily only through instance swap I believe and we are not going to use that we're just going to rely on the fact that we can kind of select the image directly in, in a given instance right and then change the image fill right here. So we can hide it, for example, or paste a different fill. So that's kind of how we are going to change the, um, the image. But in other cases, with other things in this component, we are going to be using component properties. So first of all, let me create a property or actually just rename this property to direction. And then I'm going to set the direction of this one to yes, or actually no. So this one's gonna be no, and this one's gonna be yes. And what's the reason? The reason is that we, that when we actually use an instance of this component, we can easily switch direction by clicking this toggle button, right? It's more intuitive and I think it makes sense. So that's one thing. We have set up the direction. The next thing is selecting the headline. So I'm pressing command and shift and then clicking these two headlines. And under content, I'm going to create a text property and I'm going to name this headline and I'm going to type in as a default value headline text, create property, right? This will update these and then something similar with this description. Again, select both of these by pressing command and shift, create new property. And this one is going to be called description and the default value will just keep the default value, right? So um, that's that's great. Then with the button, I'm going to select the button in the first variant and then command and click over here to select the button in the second variant. And then I'm going to go to layer 
and create a Boolean property, which is gonna hide or show our button. And then I'm going to name this component property show button. And it's gonna be true or false, right? In this case, it's true because it's visible. And then what I'm gonna do is also select this whole component, go to properties and click this plus over here and then expose properties from nested instances. So from nested instances, we get kind of this. And now when we actually use an instance of this component, we get also not only options to select this overall feature card, but we also get the options on the button. So, so this should be now done. Let me just demonstrate for you how this actually works, right? So we have created a component that has two variants. And to use an instance of this, I'm gonna go to assets and then search for horizontal card and I'm gonna click and drag that over here. So here is our instance of the horizontal card, horizontal feature card maybe. We can go in here and update the headline here, right? Update headline here. And if we confirm this change, it's gonna update our headline and similar here. So I'm just gonna type in two extra words on the start of the sentence, similar here. And you can see it updated our description. Additionally, the button. We can change the text of the button. So we can say learn more, learn more. And you can see it updates the button right here. But we also can change the type of the button to no background because we have defined a button state, that button state right here. I want to keep that at default. So right now let me also show you how you could update the image right so very quickly very quickly here's an image from pexels.com i can select the fill copy command c and then select this image directly and command v this is going to add a new fill layer on top of our previous one which is gonna kind of update the image right so i'm going to now what i'm going to do is paste that right into our website and then i am going to duplicate this by by pressing alt and then dragging and i have a second horizontal cut i'm going to change the direction easily here select the image directly and remove the new image fill so we now have two sections with two different images we could also I could also hide the button, which I'm not gonna do, but I'm going to change the headline. So second headline right here. And then we could do like description of the second horizontal card, horizontal card. And I can now move these close together, press shift A with both of these selected. And you can see that when I duplicate this, I can just keep duplicating and keep adding more features more horizontal cards uh, if I want to, but for now, I'm just gonna keep this at just two, right? So what I'm also gonna do is select the features headline, so Command C, and then select this and Command B. Put that on the very top, fill container, center text, select the parent layer by clicking, by pressing Shift Enter, renaming this parent layer to horizontal cards section, and then I'm gonna add some padding on the top, actually. So 96, I'm gonna add some spacing around, I think. Or actually, I'm just gonna add the top padding on this first feature card, which is gonna be on this first horizontal card, which is gonna be, let's say, 48, maybe. Again, select the parent layer and add a fill. So now we get this right here, right? And also I'm gonna remove the top padding, similar situation to here. So zero, enter. And then I'm gonna change this headline to horizontal cards section. And now uh, it's very easy to maintain consistency because if I decide to, for example, change the color of the text within this section everywhere on the website, I can just reduce that. I can just change that here and then it's gonna update everywhere, right? So components, instances, the usual, you probably already know this. So yeah, well, let me just launch the prototype and check what we have, how this final result looks like. We get a title features that we have created in previous videos and then we get the horizontal cards section which is also quite a common element on all the websites so yeah this is how you create horizontal cards in the next episodes we are going to i think work on some kind of social proof sections 
which means quotes, testimonials, whatever. And then we're gonna finish up with call to action and the footer. So thanks for tuning in to this episode. I hope you have learned something new. I hope uh, this series is helping you to understand web design in Figma better. If there is anything unclear, let me know in the comments below. If this video helped you, please also leave a like. And also, as I said, check out my channel where I have all episodes in a playlist. Also check the description where I, well, I have this playlist featured as well. And yeah, thanks for tuning in and I will see you in the next one.